Okay, so today we're going to do Monday, uh, 9th of June 2014, Rings, Polymers and Analysis paper. Um, so we start off with some salicyclic acid. Um, uh, key thing to know, first of all, benzene ring, obviously, so that means that's a phenol group and that is a carboxylic acid group. In the boxes draw below, uh, some uh, reactions. So this guy here, first of all, excess sodium hydroxide. If you uh, remember, phenol will react with sodium hydroxide, phenol is weakly acidic, to give you a phenoxide group. And then the carboxylic acid will also react to give you the sodium uh, salt of the carboxylic acid. Um, right. So that's that one. Let's have a look and see what's coming up. Um, describe what would be observed in reaction two. Okay, so reaction two is adding bromine. So the bromine will be decolorized, so it will go orange to colorless. Um, the other thing that you may remember is that when you react bromine with a, a, a phenol substitute group, is you actually see a white precipitate as well. So that's worth uh, just remember it. Uh, that's a test for phenol. Write a chemical equation to represent reaction two. So uh, let's have a look. So I'm starting off with that guy there. I'm adding bromine, Br2, to give me this guy there. Remember to put the bromine on the right one, and you'll remember I also make HBr as part of that as well. Um, and the final question is for reaction three: What um, do I need to add for reaction three? Well, reaction three. Um, just make sure I'm not the wrong uh, question. Uh, reaction three, I am changing my carboxylic acid into an ester group. Now, you have got to, like, the easiest way of doing that is you know that that has come from an OH. So you have to just copy it out like so. Um, you probably will notice that that is, of course, um, propan too old, just drawn in a slightly different way. I hope you can just see, just put an H on that and get rid of that bond there. Um, what else do you need to get that reaction to work? You obviously need concentrated sulfuric acid as well. Uh, right then, it's time for a mechanism. Bromine reacts more readily with salicylic acid than benzene. Outline that mechanism. So let's draw up uh, salicylic acid. Like so. Now notice it tells me it reacts with bromine. The electrophile is bromine. So you sh not allowed to just put your standard Br plus, which you would normally do if you had a halogen carrier. No, so I'm not using a halogen carrier. That's going to be delta plus, that's going to be delta minus, because obviously the electrons have got to come out of the ring and attack Br plus. That bromine, bromine bond, therefore must break to go to that bromine. So that's going to give me the intermediate. Um, now remember to break the aromatic ring at the carbon that you have substituted, being careful to match what they've given you. So it's that one there. That bond breaks to give you your product plus H plus, like so. Um, obviously this one here, if I just put that, would obviously have produced Br minus as well. So those two go on to give you your HBr. Okay, so why does bromine react more readily with salicylic acid? So, key thing, you've got your phenol there, and you know from your phenol chemistry, you've got a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom. So we can say lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom in the OH group is delocalized 
into the benzene ring. If that's delocalized, that's going to increase, that increases the electron density of the ring and therefore electrophiles are more polarized and attracted by the ring. Okay, I've now got a two-step synthesis uh, to work out. It's going to start with salicylic acid. I'm going to get to this boy here, and I've got to get an NH2 group on him. So uh, I can't just substitute an NH2 group on directly. I'm going to go via a nitro group. So suggested two-step synthesis, state of the agents used, and write a chemical equation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my salicylic acid, and I'm going to add to it nitric acid that would introduce the nitro group like so and I also make water for that um, general conditions for that um, normally you don't need um, sulfuric acid for this guy because it's a phenol so you can just add your nitric acid for that um, the next step is I'm going to take that nitro group and I'm going to reduce it using so that's nitro group there. I'm going to reduce it using tin. So I'm going to add tin in concentrated HCl, um, and you also need to heat that one up as well. Um, doesn't it just says the reagents, but then we. Um, okay, you represent that by using your six square bracket H's. Uh, you need to put two of those H's onto there to give you your product. And then the other four go off to give you two waters as well. Right, so uh, this guy uh, can react with acids to form salts. How does it do this? Okay, so you've got to think now, oh, what's it going to be? Um, well, you should know from your amine chemistry that if you have a, a nitrogen, that nitrogen has got a lone pair, which you can donate uh, by a data conveyor bond to H+. So key things, lone pair on the nitrogen atom, you must state it's on the nitrogen atom, can um, accept an H+. Plus. A form of a data covalent bond. Right, they obviously don't need their mega synthetic uh, diagrams here. Um, uh, this year. Uh, so let's have another look. So we're, we're starting with this bad boy again. Um, we are reacting with sodium nitride in HCl below 10 degrees. Ah, uh, straight away, what are you thinking? You'll be thinking that's going to be um, form a diazonium salt. So uh, obviously, it's going to be on that nitrogen. There, so form him N, triple form N. The plus charge goes on that nitrogen. There, the one attached to the benzene ring, and you also get Cl minus. Okay, hopefully that's gonna, uh, sodium hydroxide following neutralization is a key thing um, to couple this to a phenol. Hopefully, you can see that this guy is the same as this bit here. So it's that one that I've created. So compound B is going to be that guy there. Um, right, a little definition now. Um, well, first of all, salicylic acid can be used to form a condensation polymer. What is meant by term condensation? Key thing, monomers, is when monomers join together um, through the elimination of a small molecule. You've got to have that term monomer in there. So monomers join together through the elimination of a small molecule. Uh, right, the repeat unit of terylene is shown below. Draw the skeletal formula of the two that can be used. Um, right, so hopefully you can see that. Oh, we want skeletal as well. So. Is going to 
going to be the dicarboxylic acid there. And that is the diol there. But you can see that this is obviously a polyester, and those are my ester bonds that I have made there. Okay, so salicyclic acid reacts with three hydroxypropanoic acid, which is this one, propanoic acid, and you can see it's that, and then that's my hydroxy group, to form a mixture. One of these is to form one polymer, two monomers react in equal quantities, draw a repeat unit. So that's my diacid, that is going to join up to get, so that's my acid, that's going to join up, so that O becomes that O there, and then I just follow the chain down, that O would then go off, and then you can see that that's going to be the one that it joins up to from a different one, so that's how it all joins together. Key thing, it's a polyester, so when that one goes it has to join an O because they're polyesters. Right, we finally got to question two. Um, following three carbonyl compounds are structural isomers, okay, I've got to carry out a chemical test that will distinguish between them. So, let's go through them. Keto, primary alcohol. Secondary alcohol, aldehyde. Keto, tertiary alcohol. So the first thing is, let's pop in some Tollens reagent. And I would see, for D, I would see a silver mirror. For C and E, there would be no reaction. Um, okay, and the equation for that plus square bracket O, that's coming from the Tollens uh, reagent, going to give me the carboxylic acid there. The next one then is I need to, so that I've done, I know him, I've got to work out the difference here. Well, I said that is a tertiary alcohol, um, that is a primary alcohol. Primary, we know, are um, oxidized tertiary alcohol. So then I would add potassium dichromate, which has been acidified, for, and I would heat. For C, it would go orange to green. For E, it would stay orange. There wouldn't be a reaction. Um, now, uh, it really depends on how far you want to go. Uh, but um, if I'm going to heat it, then that would probably take me all the way down to a carboxylic acid. So I'm going to add two square bracket O's. give me the carboxylic acid. Water is produced when I make the aldehyde, um, so I need water there, and then the second step, the oxygen goes onto the carboxylic acid uh, like so.